Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're playing a Half-Life 2 Episode 2 custom map called Life Lost Prison by CyberZombie. This appeared on Planet Philip uh, early last week, I think it was. And it consists of three maps which uh, unfortunately are slightly unfinished towards the end. But the author felt he would release what he had rather than not releasing anything at all. And I'm pretty glad he did because the first two maps are quite fun actually. There's a couple of, there's a bit of strangeness in them but for the most part they're excellent actually. So without further ado let's go and have a look shall we? Now unfortunately at first glance the level doesn't give off a good impression. You start off in this uh, kind of narrow alleyway and the first thing you notice is that there's an invisible wall behind you blocking entry into this uh, kind of sewer area which is unfortunate because the level is actually fairly well constructed and the second issue I had with this initial uh, intro area is that if you miss a critical item like I do on my first playthrough here it creates this very very difficult environment to play in. You notice there's two towers here with kind of combined snipers standing on them with emplaced guns. But unless you find the uh, crossbow which is kind of hidden in a crate in that area I was just in, if you miss that then this area becomes very very difficult. You just kind of have to run forwards blindly into enemy territory and take out these guys because trying to take them out of range with a pistol just just turns into a labour of pain. Which is unfortunate. The level just needs some better signposting as a kind of mission critical item in this area because I just completely missed it. Just managed to scrape through this area just about anyhow. On the plus side though, as you can tell, the visuals are very well done. It captures the kind of Half-Life 2 prison aesthetic really really well in these sets of maps. There's a nice sense of parallax in, it, in this area actually. Uh, the area behind where I'm looking at the moment, there's some nice kind of buildings going off into the distance like prison buildings with some nice kind of orange glowing windows. You get a really nice sense of place and of course there's obviously lots of like fences and walls and things like that. It's a very pleasant lighting. It's generally kind of very kind of dull and flat lighting which actually goes really really well with this kind of prison aesthetic and then you get the kind of warm glows of combined lights and various kind of orange halos and things like that. It's a really nice effect. So now we have to deal with uh, this gunship that's appeared. See, this area reminds me a lot of the, the first prison map in Half-Life 2 where you break into the prison with the ant lions and you're kind of roaming around the courtyard with them attacking all the soldiers in the, uh, in the towers. This area reminds me of that. There's a lot of nostalgia here actually. Some of the indoor areas in later parts of the map as well feel like they've been ripped right out of Half-Life 2. Now this, this is where you kind of realise that you've obviously missed something critical in the map because you don't have enough rockets to take out this gunship and uh, I haven't actually found anywhere else that gives me rockets in the map so far so this is where I thought something must have been a bit something a bit strange is going on I thought that would be the rocket canister there but nope So now we're going to have to do the the gunship dance and have a look around the level while avoiding enemy fire. I oh, thank God this intro to the map here is actually fairly generous in its uh, supply of health and uh, kind of pickups that you can find strewn around the map. There's lots of them in. Actually, that, that's uh, an accolade I want to give to the author for most of this map. Actually, like every single nook and cranny in the map has a power up kind of hidden away in it. It's excellent, uh, does a really good job of rewarding exploration. Which I don't see enough authors doing. There's, there's so many places to go in a lot of these Half Life 2 maps I play, and a lot of them are just kind of dead ends with nothing there. 
cyber zombie does a very good job of placing power-ups absolutely everywhere you can get to. It's off the beaten track. So here's that cache of items I was talking about at the beginning. You'll notice that you get a crossbow as well as the uh, rocket packs. And of course that crossbow would be immensely useful at the start of the map for taking out all the combine in those towers. But it's kind of hidden away in a dark area, you don't really see it. There's a couple of um, cardboard, uh, not cardboard, uh, wooden panels which kind of protect it. Which is ironic because without the wooden panels there you'd probably see it a lot easier. What it really needs is like a spotlight shining down on this area to kind of denote it. It's important. There's nothing really drawing the player's eye there at the start, which is a shame. But yeah, I, I do like the look of this outdoor area. It's very nice. But you can kind of see, that's the view you get when you come into the area. There's really nothing there to make the player go up to there. Nice use of ambient sounds as well in this map. There's lots of nice little ambient cues and soundscape usage which uh, really brings the level to life. Again, that, that's another thing I feel that a lot of custom maps kind of... they don't put enough attention to the uh, audio scape in the maps. It's, it's so important. It's, it really is like the... if graphics are the first level of immersion then sound is most definitely the second. And you could even argue that, that sound is oftentimes more important than visuals in games. Unfortunately, a lot of authors kind of put in sound as an afterthought. They chuck a soundscape in and, and think that's it. This area is quite interesting from a gameplay perspective because you've got these kind of uh, see-through kind of chain link walls. And they, they kind of act, you can put like barricades on them like you've got here, so you've got some that provide cover and some you can just uh, kind of see through them but can't get through them. And you get some nice situations like this where you have a sentry gun that's on the other side of one of these walls that can shoot you but you can't actually damage it. Your grenades won't pass through the wall and obviously your projectiles won't either. So it becomes a, a nice little puzzle of how do I get to the other side of that wall to take out the sentry gun. And again the same with any enemies as well, they can see you through the wall but you can't actually get to them. There's a nice bit of gameplay here where you have to take out that sentry gun before you can go back around this side to pick up the power-ups. So it's a nicely thought out area, I do, do enjoy that. Even if it's just simple puzzles like that, it's just nice to have, rather than just a, a very simple combat area. Once again we can explore and find uh, extra power-ups. Some more crossbow bolts hidden behind this uh, exploding barrel here. Again, that's again. It's just a common theme throughout all the maps. Is that There's so many power-ups you can find all over the place if you just have a keen eye. Now onto the second map. We are inside the prison this time. Now, there's a couple of uh, lighting areas I noticed on the props here. I'm wondering uh, if that was, could have been avoided perhaps by some use of info lighting or... I'm not, what, I'm not sure what kind of compile settings he used here to kind of light the map, but it looks like uh, he's using the old style of prop lighting. Looks like he's not using the, uh, you know, minus static prop lighting and static prop shadows that were added to the compile options for episode 2. There's a couple of areas where you have like very dark props in well-lit areas or vice versa, which is a shame. But I guess that's just nitpicking really. 
it's not really a big deal in this map. Now I like here that you kind of preview upcoming areas in the cameras here. It gives the player a nice mental list of areas that could be important. It's always a nice way to use cameras like that. And it's used in some some other decent ways later on as well. Just a little bit of setting the scene here, so lots of typical Half-Life 2 prison scenes, people being tortured and uh kind of large large areas with uh combat about to happen in them. So you see here, once you press the button, you can actually see the door open in the camera. That's a really nice feedback mechanic for players to actually show players what activating buttons does in your maps. So many times I see it where you press a button and you're like, okay, what the hell did that do? <laughs> it's always it's always really, really good if you can actually show players what their actions are doing in the maps. And again, just using cameras like that is a great way of doing it. It's also nice you can actually hear the door opening as well. Um, I'm not sure if that's the sound entity that you can hear from where you were in the map, or whether he actually placed the sound entity there in the room with you, or used perhaps just used the uh, the recorder sound entity so you can hear other parts of the map in your current location. Whatever the case, it's always nice if you can hear and see what your actions are doing. I think that's the point to be made there. Yeah, it's very sneaky. The old falling down the stairs trick. <laughs> now, what I was trying to do, I was trying to think about whether I actually do want to knock down these uh, these uh, sentry turrets or not. Because I was, I was kind of thinking that perhaps more allies will come and I'll need them. But that didn't seem to be the case right now. So this part of the map really doesn't make a lot of sense. This is the only part that I was a bit disappointed by, is that you come down here, you kill a bunch of enemies, and uh, you don't actually find anything to do. There's nothing actually mission critical down here. There's no buttons to press, or there's nothing you actually do to physically open up a new part of the level. You just come down here, and then magically the doors to the uh, washing area are now open. And it's never really explained how that happens or why just kind of very uh, arbitrary. But yeah, never mind. I, I was figuring there'd be some sort of power up up here. Or an item, but no, no. Somehow I managed to get myself stuck on a bit of collision here. I tried to replicate it in a different playthrough, but I uh, couldn't do it again, but hey, never mind. So yeah, I'm guessing the plan was to have something uh, important down here the player had to do, but uh, I guess the map never quite got around to it. Yeah, I imagine that was quite confusing to some players that uh, weren't expecting these doors to be open now. I'm not really too fond of these sentry guns here as well, because there's really no cover to kind of deal with them. There's a, that was a very, very lucky grenade I got in there. I can imagine players running out of grenades here and just having to run into fire without any cover. Which could have been a bit annoying. Now I really like the combat in this room, the problem is just getting into the room to start with. Uh, the issue is that you walk into the doorway and just everything in the room sees you instantly. So you're kind of stranded in the doorway just trying to snipe everything before you get in there. 
Which is a shame because if you do try to charge into the room before the enemies really get a bead on you, then it can actually turn into a really interesting combat. There's lots of cover all over the place, lots of different ways you can deal with the enemies on show here. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm reckoning that around 90% plus of players will just kind of see the enemies, notice them, and then just kind of hide around the doorway until they're all dead. Which is a shame. The other issue here is uh, that I noticed on subsequent playthroughs is that if you take out all this, the enemy sentry guns here, um, there's a constant stream of ant lines coming out of the floor that can just absolutely destroy you if you're not careful. Let's try that one again, shall we? Yeah, I, I think what this area would have really benefited from is if there were no combine in the room to start with and uh, they kind of burst in through perhaps the windows or, you know, a couple repelled down from a, a skylight perhaps. There's just lots of different ways you can fill you fill a room with enemies very quickly without having them notice you uh, as soon as you kind of enter the doorway. Because again, we've got the same problem here now where I'm just kind of sniping everything from the doorway because actually going into the room is pretty much instant death by now. I think perhaps another missed opportunity is perhaps have the uh, another option would be to have the ant lines and combine fighting each other while you walk into the room, so they're kind of already busy. You can kind of see where everything is, and how you want to attack the situation. That could have been interesting. Perhaps have a stairway leading up to the second level, right where you enter the room as well, give some more tactical options. So you notice here, this sentry gun is just taking out the ant lines as soon as they come up through the hole. If you, uh, if you grenade the sentry gun or otherwise knock it over, it can just become a real chore just taking out all these uh, ant lines. They seem to just carry on forever, just spawning out of this hole one at a time. It's kind of strange how if you go down into that bottom area there's no other ways up around the other side of the room. You kind of have to walk all the way back to the uh, entrance area. A set of stairs at the back here would have been nice. So again, this, this topside area provides no real tactical benefit to the player to come up there because everything's usually dead by this point, but still, there's some magnum ammo up there that you can get. So again, it's just the author rewarding exploration. Always a fan of that in Half-Life maps. Now that, that shotgun soldier there made me jump the first time I went around here. <laughs> Excellent placement there. Alright, now on to the third and final map. Now unfortunately this one is rather unfinished. There's a, a multitude of bugs and visual anomalies which is a real shame. Uh, some of which are fairly obvious. <laughs> Exhibit 1. <laughs> Walking outside the map. Now I'm guessing the plan here was to have uh, perhaps ant lines bursting out of holes in the walls as you were involved in this combat here. Unfortunately it's never quite implemented. And the other issue is uh, fairly self-explanatory.
Yes, it's, it's a real shame because this area is actually really fun to fight the Antline Guardian once he decides to actually move and attack you. Uh, that only seems to happen if you get close to him. It's entirely possible to just sit at range and kill him. Which again just kind of breaks this entire area. But uh, if you do activate him, which I will in a moment, it's actually really good fun to fight him in this area. It's, it's just big enough to support the kind of combat the author wants here. It's, it's small enough that the Antline Guard is extremely dangerous and quite hard to avoid, but luckily there's kind of this big loop that you can run around. But it ends up just being this really tense fight where you're only just out of reach at all times. It's, uh, it's actually really, really well put together. Yeah, it's just a shame this area wasn't finished. And that is basically the end of the map. Because uh, all the exits coming out of here are just uh, blocked off with black borders, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm, it's a shame that the final map was released in this state. There's, there's no even real, like, you know, fade to black or the end or anything, which would have been very, very simple to implement. It just kind of ends here. And with such a standout bug with the Antline Guard, I'm surprised that wasn't fixed before he released this map. It's obviously just some bug with the uh, navigation uh, AI nodes in this part of the map or something, which is, would have been fairly simple to fix, I imagine. It's a shame it wasn't done. But hey, overall, I, I enjoyed the first two maps in here. There's some, uh, there's obviously some issues with things like uh, getting the player to notice important pickups at, in part one, and then in part two there's some strange progression, like I've no mentioned. But uh, the combat itself was quite fun. Alright guys, I'm probably going to do the uh, Beginningville mapping competition uh, maps next. So uh, stick around and we'll get on to them really soon. I'll see you later. See you next time.